What's up, everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and once again, we're back at Indian of Oklahoma City. We love this family, we love their dealership, but we're not paid by them. We just appreciate them for allowing us to ride these beautiful machines and get these reviews out to you. So today we're doing the entire Scout family from the Scout 60 to Scout Bobber. This here is the Scout 60. Notice that it has black handlebars, a fully black headlight. It has blacked out engine components. It has black horn cover, has black key entry area, has black primary, black transmission cover but it does have the chrome pipes now it does usually have a black seat versus this brown one they just took that off and uh, changed that out with another bike for somebody to have a good look uh, but they do share the same suspension components and everything of the big scout it just has the 999 cc engine with five speed transmission now the big scout of course is 1130 cc's with a six speed transmission you'll notice that the transmission and primary covers are chrome the horn covers chrome has that kind of nickel finish on the heads of the bike at the cam covers and it gives it that silver look so different look now they do share the chromed out um, exhaust components but this bike has the chrome ring around the headlight, chrome handlebar, so you'll see the more bright components on this bike. And it does come stock with the brown leather seat. So that is a little bit of the differences there. Dimensionally, though, it is the same as the 60. Now, the weight-wise, the 60 actually only weighs in at 542 pounds, and the Big Scout here weighs 550 pounds. So there is a little bit of a difference. Now, this motorcycle generally would have the last trim piece that's missing from the 60, and that's this medallion that usually goes over the cable components. This one was removed, and that way somebody with a 60 could have that. Now, the Bobber is the most expensive and also the heaviest of this group at 500 and 54 pounds. Now this bike has a mixture of mostly blacked out components but it also still has the nickel finish on the cam covers. So you'll see that that engine is still the 1130 cc engine but it has a little bit different trim bits on it with the blacked out components and a little bit different ignition key system and horn cover. Seat is also different and this bike has one inch less suspension travel on each side to give it the lower look and also a 25.6 inch seat height. Of course it has the chop fender on it. Uh, like I said, you do lose a little bit of that suspension. Now it does have a cowling over the headlight and the handlebars are blacked out and they're also not as long as the Scouts, they don't rise as high, and they also are more narrow. The bars are bar-end type mirrors, so you have those mirrors under slung. Now, the Scouts can be highly modified. This is a 60 that is modified on the floor with trim components from the um, catalog. Also, some different suspension setup, as you can see. It has the more custom suspension setup, different exhaust, Roland Sands design, handlebars, and stuff like that. These are highly customizable machines, so that's pretty cool about them. Now, getting on the controls, of course, the right... On, on this bike is just simply the start, stop, and start. Of course, you have your hazard lights, your turn signals, your brights, and your horn, and also your modes, or not mode selection, but your information selection on the back end there on the left side. All the dials are the same, so when they pop up, you'll see the same brights. You'll see the same ABS warning if they're ABS equipped. You'll see the same uh, service engine light. You'll see everything else is the same. Now, the only difference is going to be the trim inside of those um clocks basically you're going to see that this speedometer on these two are the same with that kind of cream and red but then you'll see on the bobber that it's a blacked out look but all of them have the same information with the same lighting the same gear indication the same engine temperature odometers and everything when you scroll through that information side on the left hand grip so let's go ahead start these up and hear what each of them sound like
So the last time I got to ride the Scout 60 was actually in Phoenix, Arizona. And that was a group led uh, ride. So this time I get to actually take it out and feel it out for what it is. You know, how good is this 999cc engine? Seems to pull mighty fine to me. Well, let's get out here and see what we can do. Because right now I am in third gear and right, I'm dead on in the power band because this thing is ready to start going. There we go. Alrighty, so when you're up at highway speed, even with a little bit of reduction, you're not really rotating too much for a V-twin. You're at 3,800 RPM, 3,750 at highway speed, and that's pretty decent. The suspension is the same as it is on the standard Scout as well, so you still have the back shocks double, and they have three inches of travel and on the front, you have about 4.7 inches of travel and a 41 millimeter fork. And you can tell that short travel on the back will punch you. <laughs> you heard my voice part kind of go, bang. <laughs> this is bare bones riding though. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Now this engine is still as smooth as the Scout 1130 engine, which is the one next up. And I mean, it doesn't really have a lack of power. It, it, it still feels really good. I mean, no, it's not as fast as the bigger brother, but you're not really sacrificing too much. Despite getting down there a little bit in price, you're almost, almost $2,000 less than your standard Scout. And you're really not hurting yourself on performance. This bike literally goes right between the Sportster 883 and the 1200 in terms of price and everything. I mean, it weighs 542 pounds. 3.3 gallon gas tank as well, kind of like the Sportster. Has more power than both the 883 engine and the 1200 engine actually still. So what are you really sacrificing if you decide to move up to this bike? And like I said, this one does have ABS, so it's not going to be the lesser of the MSRP. But it, it really, that's the only true option it has is the ABS with the red paint. Everything else is just completely and utterly bare bones, and this thing just rides so nice. It definitely outpowers the 883 Sportster. And like I said, it is right in line with the 1200 as well, despite the reduced displacement that this bike has. Whoa, hey buddy. Tell me you're coming back next time. This bike is just being a nice little, nice little dream right now. I'm really enjoying the character of the engine. I, I for some reason, I, you know, whenever you've got a bike that's slightly less powerful, less potent than its other brother, it seems like that particular bike has more character. Like the V7 and the V9, which are near the same price point as this motorcycle, both of them are, you know, they're they're both very similar in what they do. They're both standards but the V9 has a slightly bigger engine, but it doesn't seem to have the character or the revving spirit of its little brother, the V7. And this one just like, like the entire chassis and everything's the same. That's where the V7 and V9 differ from this is because that is a completely different chassis. This particular one is the same chassis as its bigger brother, but you're not, it doesn't feel like you're really sacrificing too much. Like I said, you do actually get a little bit of a weight reduction as well because you're taking away a gear, you're taking away a few things from the engine and it gives it that little bit less weight. And to be honest, 
I think it helps the bike out a little bit. It livens it up a little bit. So like, as I, like a lot of people keep thinking, you know, well, if I'm buying this bike, I'm sacrificing stuff for it because it's less in price and less than this. It's an entry level bike. You have to think about that in that term. Every motorcycle company has an entry level. Everybody has, you know, a motorcycle that starts at a price point where everybody can start getting into their brand. And that's what this bike does. But this bike does it in such a way that it is one of the best ambassadors for an entry level motorcycle for a company. It is under 10 grand, like I said. And it rides, rides like its older brother or bigger and older. It is older brother too. It's at the same time, it's a bigger and older brother. But in a way, the way the the way this engine is geared with the transmission is that it allows you to stay in the power band even at your top gear. So that way when you pull it, you still have plenty of pulling power to get in away from traffic and to dodge in and out of things. I mean, it it's fantastic. I mean, look at this pull in second gear, third. I mean, it has great pull and great charisma. Like I said, I don't know why, but I like the way this one feels. It's punchier in a sense. I know by riding scouts and I've rode my friends because They've got one, I've rode it many times up and down the interstate. And I can tell you that that bike is faster than this one, but this one just feels more exciting in a way. And I don't know how to describe why it does that. But like I said, with that fifth gear, now if you're gonna be doing 45 miles an hour, you don't wanna hit fifth gear yet, because if you do, I mean, look at your RPM drop. It feels so bogged right now. And you're not getting any pull. I mean, look how long it takes me to just get five miles an hour. There you go. So you want to be in a more happier gear for it. I'm in fourth gear now. Look at the difference. It's just in a happier rev range toward 3,000 RPM. And that's where you're at in the highway. So that means you're in your power band. So when you're on a bike that's in its power band, it makes it more exciting because of the way it feels. Because you're getting the most of your power at that point. The engine braking on this motorcycle is also fantastic as well. Just to come to expect for most V-twins that have any sort of compression, which is all of them right now. Just kidding. I mean, this thing is fun. <laughs> Puts a smile on my face. Now, and you know, yeah, let me get back back. It does just feel so weird when, when you're going 45 and in fifth gear. It just feels, it doesn't feel right at all. Just, you can feel the engine wanting to almost shut down practically, but that's not a big deal. Put it in fourth, smooth it out. I mean, you got counterbalancers on this bike, smooth engine whenever you're down in this gear. Now, some of the things that you get that's missing is like that plate that blocks these, uh, cables and stuff on the regular scout so that's missing as well like I said the mounting hardware is slightly different not chromed out more basic so you do lose some components and stuff like that it strips down just a smidge but I mean the fit and finish is still really good it's still a blast to ride it's got that lively scout chassis and like I said adding a little bit more rev happy engine on it Puts a bigger smile on my face. Now, I will say this about the suspension. Does it bottom out rather quickly? And is it, you know, a very tight, rough suspension? In a way, it is. Whenever you're going through some rough roads, like what I'm riding right now, you feel it. You feel it everywhere. But there's a lot of bikes that are out there that are way more expensive than this motorcycle that don't have the suspension that this one does. There's a lot of bikes out there that's less expensive than this motorcycle that has the suspension that this one does too. So this is one thing. It's just the way it's set up because you have more angle on these. They're trying to get as much um, travel distance as they can out of it. So with a, like a Sportster, it is tight. It does bounce you off the saddle every once in a while, but it's not 
bad. The, the, the chassis is very compliant and tight because of it, so it doesn't wobble in turns. We complain, you know, or at least I complain about my Rebel 500, which is immensely cheaper. It is three grand cheaper, th actually $3,600, $3,700 cheaper, almost four grand than this. But that one wallows and, and hurts itself in corners because of how soft suspension is. And it's the same front four, 41 millimeter, and it's a similar rear end as well. So you could have really bad suspension in any price point because Sportsters are more expensive with the 1200 and uh, you only get a couple of inches, like two inches of travel out of those things. And trust me, they're gonna buck you off a little bit more. Now, some of them like the Roadster have a decent suspension set, but they're more expensive than this bike right here. God, this thing, I just love the way it revs out. It just, it does feel more lively, even though it's a smaller engine. I touch my feet down so fast on forward mounted bikes, I keep forgetting that. I never hit the pegs, I'm actually scraping the side of my boot off. <laughs> I mean, look at this thing, get on the interstate just fine, blasted right up to it. Like I said, this chassis feels so alive and the engine as well. It's just so happy. <laughs> it's a great riding machine. I love it. I mean, and I like the blacked out touches a little bit more, but that's my personal flavor. I like more blacked out motorcycles than I do Chromie. And this one, this one fits a bill that I definitely like. It's punchy, it's agile, it's smooth, it's comfortable. I mean, it does take bumps a little harshly. And if you're in Oklahoma, that will wear on you. But you know, buy a set of progressive suspension, add an inch to your travel, and you'll be fine. With the money you save between the regular Scout and this one, you can get a couple of suspension bits. <laughs> You're not going to get power bits though, but you're going to get some suspension bits. <laughs> oh, this thing's just so fun. Alrighty. I don't know how bad this road is right now. It's always gravelly. Turns so well too. And we're on this bouncy road. Like I said, it's not wallowing at all handling that turn just fine despite all the additional bumps and fun stuff it is a great riding machine I never got the chance to really ring her out in Phoenix and now that I am I'm enjoying this engine way more than I did back then I remember just kind of Kind of being kind of oh okay this is okay it, it, it's just a little bit less powerful scout you know kind of kind of in my mind and trying to talk it up but now that i'm able to actually like wring its neck a little bit it's so fun i mean it's just a great powerful delivery even though it doesn't have what its bigger brother has Now I'm going straight into the wind, which today's winds are in the 30s or so. Put that back down there. But we got those decent Oklahoma winds back again and heading straight into them this time. This bike is not being upset by them at all. It's not moving. It doesn't feel like it's being pushed around. As a rider, since you're down more into this bike than you are on top of it, it actually helps cut some of that wind down on you. CBR. <laughs> it just rides so so well and I I mean if you're looking for a good entry-level bike that you could take around town and uh, take on the highway and have some fun with I mean this is a bike that would be great if you outfit it with some bags and stuff like that to go on a good tour as well and the smoothness of this motorcycle is not gonna inhibit you at all it's gonna it, 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 it's so good that your hands aren't going to be feeling like pins and needles you know in only an hour or so 
I mean, yeah, you don't have as much fuel capacity as a lot of larger motorcycles. Yes, this is a middleweight. This is not a big bike. It's not going to have huge amounts of fuel to carry. That way you have a little bit less weight, too. It allows you to get around town better. But like I said, it has enough that you're going to go 130, 40, 50 miles on a tank of gas. And that's enough to get you around places. It's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's a great all-around machine. And I love all-arounders, and I love basic machines. Yes, it has ABS brakes. Yes, it has, you know, a couple of electronic gadgetries, you know, but that's it. It's not, it's pretty basic. And I like basic, and I like the ride. I love it right now. And I really haven't commented on the brakes yet because I've been riding. I haven't had to slam on them yet, so I'll test them here in a moment and do a final thought. This thing just gets going, and I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Do, 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 do. Alrighty. Now this is a single disc front. But as stated, it is equipped with ABS braking. So, man, this thing stops in a hurry. <laughs> Go ahead and test that out, and that did very, very well. Very good feedback on these as well. You don't get any pulsing or anything like that. It just brings it to a halt, nice, smooth, uncomplicated, and that's what we look for in a bike. Something that we don't complain about, something that's got great power, that's well balanced, that's just a fantastic characteristic machine and this one fits all those bills so back about four or five years ago it all started here at indian of oklahoma city and this is one of the first bikes i ever got to demo ride when indian first came back and that was when they first released the indian scout so it was under the cloud of being stuck in a group and today we're going to be out away from the group. We're going to be out on an enjoyable ride today. Alrighty. Now, I have rode many, many scouts since the first ride I did back in 2014. Late 2014, actually. And I have been impressed with these motorcycles ever since and every time because this 1130 is a very potent engine but it's a very smooth engine at the same time it's an engine that that's more designed to literally be the quintessential cruiser engine for around town so it has the power to pull away but the power to just kind of shut up and be kind in the background too at the same time that's a fun combination in my opinion <laughs> Like I said, I like the balanced motorcycles. Now braking is of course serviced by a single front disc brake up front, cable operated clutch. So your travel on your clutch is gonna be right around halfway between the end of travel and the hand grip for your friction zone. Go ahead and flip this to tachometer for you all. Back in third gear again. <laughs> now the thing is, like I said, it is more powerful and I know it's faster than the 60, but the thing is, it's like the, the charisma that the 60 has was well worth it, but look how much speed I've already gotten to on accident there because this one comes up on you and sneaks up on you. Now, we were at around 3,900 or so RPMs, 3,800 RPMs, 38, 39, somewhere in there. Here we are, 3,700 RPMs when we're on the highway. Doing highway speeds, 3,650 now. Just kind of get a nice rhythm. Like I said, this bike has a charisma in the mid-range of it, going through the gears and everything. So when you're in second, third, fourth, even fifth gear you're getting a lot of fun out of it sixth gear is just a nice cruising gear it tells that engine to shut up rev down and enjoy the ride 
Now, like I said, everything is the same on this bike. Same 41 millimeter suspension as the 60. Same three inch travel rear shocks, double. But you get all these little chrome bits here. And now the handlebars are chromed out too. You can see that chrome ring up ahead. <laughs> so you get all these little touches here and there. It's a little bit different. You get a different selection in paint too. More premium paints, to be honest. This deep, this is a nice color here, this emerald. And this bike is just nice and comfortable once again. And like I said, you compare it to its 60 friend, little brother, whatever you want to call it. And they're very, very, very similar. Only this one you get to kind of cruise and it doesn't feel as bogged down either. I know I'm going a little faster, we'll get up to speed here, or we'll get down to the city speeds here in a moment, but I mean, this one doesn't seem in the lower RPMs to feel as bogged down as Little Brother, because Little Brother wants to spin up and have fun. This one, this one likes to just kind of cruise, but if you poke it with a stick, like an angry beehive, it's going to send its power out. Now the biggest difference is between this one, this particular chassis, and of course the Scout Bobber, which is next on the list, is the fact that this one does sit higher. It also has one inch more suspension travel in the rear because the, uh, the Scout Bobber has the same engine, but it doesn't have the same suspension setup. So it's the same front fork essentially, but the back end's been lowered down to get a little bit lower to the ground feeling for that bobbed out look. Of course, that one's a little bit more sporting too this one this is the dead middle of the range and you know it it's so balanced it's so comfortable it, it's so potent too I mean it, it's just a bike though that I'm enjoying this ride it's just purring right, right along without much input from my hand stabbing it on even in top gear you see that five mile an hour climb is real fast we were doing that earlier a little bit slower speeds in the you know the 999 couldn't jump that quick especially in the top gear this one's a top gear on the highway and it, it effortlessly changes speed like i said you poke it with a you poke the hive with the stick and the power is released it's a very linear power too it, it's all over the place on this bike it's in low range, it's in mid range, it's in high range. This bike will freely rev into the 9000s real easily. And it's just so darn comfortable. I mean, I love the 62. Both of them are the same. <laughs> Can't talk about that much more because let's be honest, they're the same. It really is in the engine. It really is in the transmission and the power delivery between the two of them. And of course the chrome bits here and there. And this one does weigh a little bit more. So it is a little bit lazier in my opinion. Like I said, the chassis with a little bit of weight reduction soon to come a little bit more live. This one, this one, even though it does have very good feedback and I've always praised the way the Scout dives in the corners and holds on to them. Even if you're dragging pegs in a hurry. This one just that little bit more weight it feels like there's a little bit more to overcome in the bar input to get it to go left and right it also is a little bit different too in terms of like i said the power delivery systems but it's also the compression ratio 10 and a half to one on this machine and over 11 on the other one So you get a different feedback from that alone. But this one just loves to cruise. I'm gonna go ahead and give her the brakes here. And the brakes are very good on this one. This is the first um, regular Scout that I've rode with ABS. Uh, the first one I ever rode uh, on, the, on the Tour was a non-ABS bike and this is uh, my friends is a non-ABS bike too it's the first one that I've ever done of course like I said it's gonna make do with a single disc front for its stopping power single disc rear but it gets it gets down in speed just fine 
bike weighs in the 550s, 560s. It doesn't need all the braking power in the world to stop it, but with the power it has, it needs a little bit more. <laughs> Oh, there you go, bounce right off the saddle there. Like I said, just like a sportster, you're gonna get punched off the saddle. Now, earlier we were doing 45 miles an hour in fifth gear with the other scout. Now we're doing 45 mile an hour and it didn't like it. We're doing 45 mile an hour here in fifth gear and it actually doesn't mind it at all. This one is handling it just fine. There's no bog feeling or anything like that. Put it in sixth gear, hilariously, no balking feeling. It doesn't like it, but it doesn't actually, you don't feel that thump, 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 thump like it's bogging down. You just feel the engine running, but it gets out of it really fast too. And if you see, we'll do that five mile an hour jump again, right here, and look how much it jumps still. This one jumps still much faster because it's, it's in a different power band than the little brother. Oh yeah, grabbers work great on this bike. Put your face in your helmet fast. <laughs> and it flings itself up to speed so quick. Like I said, this bike is way different and way faster, and it, but it just does it all through its range. Whereas little Spunk over there, little the little brother, likes to do it higher in its range. So that's where that bike feels a little bit more exciting, but this bike is definitely quicker. <laughs> and I mean, there's not much in CC difference. I mean, 999 to 1130 is not that much at all. But just those little tweaks and little things and gearing and everything makes differences. Like I said, weight makes difference on a motorcycle, even if it is only a couple of pounds. I mean, when you get up and going, this bike takes corners just fine like it always has. Like I said, with these Ford mounts and the feet that I have, I always touch my feet down on the Scout so quick versus the bike itself, because I have to move my feet more inboard to try to get touch the bike. Man, it feels good. Here, I'll kind of show you. See, I have to, if I try to make it, I, I don't fit anywhere. So I have to put them way down and my foot sticks way out there because of how wide it is. And it's so long too, it's kind of hard to see the heel, but the heel goes way far back there. I don't have much turning room, unfortunately, on bikes like this. This is where I prefer the mid mounts and bikes like that due to the sheer fact that I don't touch down as often when I have a little bit more foot room like touch my foot down. I could touch the peg down, but I can't, I'd rather not touch my foot down and tear up on my foot and my boot and all that fun stuff. <laughs> but I don't mind forward mount when you're going on a long trip. I mean, if you're not gonna treat this bike like a sport bike and go carving canyons and try to touch down and do everything you can to be a sport bike rider, yeah, you know, if you're just cruising through, it's fine. If you try to do it the other way, I'll come back with half a boot left and on each side and that'd be kind of sad. <laughs> But this bike actually could do it. It's actually very fun to go through turns with this bike and it's very, very maneuverable. And I mean, like I said, even though it does feel a little bit lazier than Little Brother, it still turns very, very well. It's still very, very sharp on its steering. Engine braking on this bike is also very good as well. Well, the times when I'm riding a friend's bike, I'll go ahead and just kind of back her off, usually using engine braking and come to a near complete stop. But yeah, I mean this, the Scout is a very enjoyable machine and they start under 12 grand. I mean, look at that 50 miles an hour in first gear. <laughs> that bike is alive in these mid to higher RPMs. We're at 5,700. Look at this thing rocking. <laughs> This one likes to rock it, and that's the whole thing. In the low gear, it'll take off and go fine. 
you get in the mid, it really likes to rock. I mean, this, this is a fun engine on both bikes, even with a slight displacement. It's just a fun engine. <laughs> And you get some good vibrations too from mid to higher RPMs on this bike. This bike's soul starts coming out right then and there too. But this bike's suspension's gonna, gonna catch you and throw you off the seat every once in a while. <laughs> Hitting these bumps and mopping off the seat slightly. <laughs> Uh, the only thing you gotta do is get a little bit different suspension. This thing loves turns. Loves them, loves them, loves them, loves them, loves them, and my foot just touched that again. <laughs> what a fantastic machine, and both of them, you're not gonna go wrong. You're not gonna feel unhappy. Really, if you get a 60 or a full-size Scout, they both have so much to offer. They're both fairly, very comfortable riding machines. Of course, like I said, there's gonna be a few bumps that are gonna tell your kidneys that they don't need to be in your body anymore, but <laughs> to me, it's part of the flavor and I'm starting to laugh because I'm enjoying myself so much right now. It's just such a comfortable, such a well-balanced, such a well-done machine. Just a well, well-done, well-put-together machine by Indian. I cannot praise the Scout enough. It's one of the best middleweights there is out there. And every time I ride it, I'm always reminded of it. It's always a pleasure. And yes, I'm a bigger guy. A lot of people say I'm too big for this Scout. No, 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 no. That's uh, just fine. It pulls my lard around just fine, if you guys want to say that. <laughs> Alrighty then. So at any rate, When it comes down to the Scout, it is a fantastic machine. I will recommend every day. Like I said, there are gonna be some people that will need to change the suspension out on it because the stock suspension doesn't have very much travel in it at all. But man, this thing is just, it's a great bike. It's a great machine. It puts a smile on your face. It's gonna be a good companion for you. You can get windshields and saddlebags and everything. My friend's actually has the short windshield on it. it. Takes a lot of the air pressure off. The rider does a lot of good, a lot, lot of good for it. Put some bags on it, take her on a long tour. Like I said, you can get 140 miles out of a tank of the gas on this thing, riding highway. So if you're not bombing through the city and you don't have to do mixed riding, it's gonna get you the gas mileage to get you 140 miles. I mean, that's a little over two hours of riding, even at 60 miles an hour. And by then, you're gonna to wanna to stretch anyway. Most people do these days. So this bike is perfect for your traveling, riding, city bombing, everything needs, just like its little brother. And just fantastic. Now this one does have the same exact engine transmission combination as the Scout. So this particular motorcycle is equipped with 1130cc engine. Same horsepower ratings, there's no change in that whatsoever. They don't change the trim packaging on it either, so it still has the chrome on the uh, valve covers or um, if you want to call it the uh, cam covers too, because this bike is actually the cams. And like I said, ugh, you can definitely feel that you don't have as much suspension. And you have a completely different seat as well on this one. 
And um, as stated, I'm not much of a fan of this particular seat. Some may not find it a problem, but my posterior is kind of large compared to some people. So it's gonna not like me as much. <laughs> ah. But the thing is, this bike is nice and aggressive. You know, it's a little bit, <laughs> just like it's bigger, or just like the other Scout, it kind of likes to get up there and speed pretty decently. But anyway, this one's more aggressive. And with the shorter handlebars, and the way your riding position is, you're more tucked into the bike. You can use your hips, you can use your legs a little bit more to aid that turning. That way, this one is the definitely feels like the most dynamic of them. Not necessarily is, but whenever you get down and you start to play around, this bike definitely feels like it can go back and forth and into the corners much, much better. Unfortunately, this is Oklahoma and we don't get to test that that often. <laughs> But when you get to corners like this, I'm already on the peg there in just two seconds, but my foot hit the ground well first and I had to bounce it up a little bit. Same problem, we're still mostly a forward mount on this bike, even though this one's back more toward mid. So, you can get down in the corner much faster though, I will admit that at very quick. Now this one is still single disc front and rear ABS as well so we're still equipped with ABS on this machine and just like the other scouts it is happy to rev and obliged for power <laughs> I just can't show it because big box truck I hate big box truck <laughs> how to ruin a biker's day <laughs> Alrighty, getting up to highway speed here just like the other one. You're not really much well pulling that much RPM. So you get up to the highway speed, you're looking at 60 or 36, 3650 RPM. In town highway speed, about 3000 to 3100, 3150, somewhere in there. handles that quite nicely. Now, compared to the other two motorcycles, because of the more aggressive stance, the fact that you're more on your wrists, the fact that you're a little bit more tucked into the bike, this one is more or less your city boulevard destroyer. <laughs> this is a very quick motorcycle. And going around town on it, you're gonna have a blast doing it. It's a great A to B bike in town. Great stoplight performer too, because it's got a lot of torque on that low end and it likes to rev it up high too. You've got all this torque everywhere in this motor and that's a great thing. And you definitely feel the loss of an inch in that suspension. And that's why this one, if you're gonna be out there long range, it's gonna probably punish you a little bit more. Can it do it? Change the seat out. You're gonna gain a little bit of height probably if you had a little bit of suspension on it too, but it could do it. But that little hump just getting onto this part, I've not been thrown off the whole time until just then I actually got slightly off the saddle. Because like I said, you feel the inch. <laughs> Engine braking is just like the other one, super good as well. But this this bike is perfect for this. It's so narrow, and you can get around cars really easily with this motorcycle if you need to. And start getting in and out of traffic super quick. It has enough power, even in top gear at this speed, to pull away. And that's that's what you need in a bike that's going to take on an urban environment like this. You want a bike that's able to get between vehicles if you're in an area that allows splitting, which hopefully more and more states will get there. I hope Oklahoma one day will realize this. Let us filter through. 
but I mean this bike is capable of it it's capable of getting in and out of situations it's so quick on its feet it's so easy to turn and such easy to use power since like I said it's no matter where you are it's pretty much there you're not gonna run out of it but especially I mean every time I'm hitting these bumps now on the Scout 60, on the Scout, you don't feel the transitions in the concrete like I do right now. I can feel them. <laughs> and like I said, is it a bad thing? Not necessarily. It gives it a little bit more connection to the machine and ground. If you're somebody who really likes to feel the bike and feel the machine and feel the heart of the beast, this is a bike that's gonna convey that a lot more than the other two. This one's gonna have a little bit different feel to it. It's gonna have that more aggressive, more brawler style, more roadster style feel to it. Like I said, it changes directions and gets in and out of traffic so, so well. This is all engine braking. That's what I wanted to kind of do. Here we go. Every scout will do this. Walk its way to a darn stop. Don't really need brake. <laughs> now this one, just like the other two, the feel is great on the brake lever. It doesn't have any spongy feel. It's very tight. It's very responsive. The engine is very responsive. <laughs> the suspension is... <laughs> Every time you hit a bump... Uh, but that's, like I said, it, it's a different kind of machine. There are guys out there, that's why they ride hardtails, that's why they do the things they do. It's because they want to feel the machine. And this one is definitely the package if you're gonna be that kind that wants to feel and be one with the machine because you're in it. You're more, you're more actively participating by getting down into it, putting your wrists into it, putting your hips into it, putting your legs into it. This bike definitely is the sporting of the three definitely is the most soulful of the three. But I personally would go with the other two. <laughs> but the thing, I mean, I, I love this bobber. I, I love it a lot. The looks are awesome. The fit and finish is amazing. The bike overall is still a great bike, but I would have to change so much when I could just buy the middle range scout and enjoy it just as much but i love the way this one looks i love the bob fender on this one i love the i love the more aggressive more blacked out look that's just that's just how i've always been though <laughs> yeah i'm not even gonna try over there <laughs> uh. now with the mirrors down you can see out of them just fine I'm looking down, I see him just past my forearm and I can see behind me and around me pretty decently. I do need to drop, you know, my head back a little bit more when I'm on the highway just to be sure, be sure, but you can still, for normal city riding, you can just look down and you get all the information you need just fine. I'll go ahead and, there we go, ah, a little bit more and, actually we're darn perfect there darn perfect on the other mirror already so that's all you gotta do sometimes but yeah we get up to corners like I said this particular motorcycle is gonna be able to do them just fine oh that bump <laughs> and braking <laughs>
Yeah, brakes good. Once again, equipped with ABS. No pulse feels, no weird things through the pedal or the lever when you have to do a nice little panic stop. Oof. <laughs> ah, comfort. There we go. Here's your comfort, comfort suspension right here. Just find a new road and run it up and down all day long. <laughs> Definitely, though, I, I love the way this one plays, though. I mean, this, this would be a fun one to put a mid-mount set on and go play around on a track with because it's got the more narrow handlebars. It's got, it's got you know, just a little bit different feel that being that lower to the ground too, it, it does change the way this feels. It definitely is not as lazy as the other two. But the other ones are no slouches either, but this one just responds so much quicker whenever you're going to flick the chassis. But it is definitely a good riding machine. But I would really say if you're gonna go long range, be sure to change the seat. Be sure to know that the suspension is not as good as the other two. Because it definitely, you definitely feel that inch is missing. <laughs> Now the heat coming off of all these bikes, been out here, you know, we got them heated up on purpose, get them a little bit outer than, than uh, just sitting around on a showroom floor and going straight out. And you don't feel really any heat coming off of them that's, that's anything concerning. My night rod that I had was so much hotter than these engines. You know, very similar engine overhead cam, water cooled. Uh, about the same size, you know, the original night rods and V-rods were 1130s as well. Mine was 11 or 1250. So, you know, mine being a slightly different engine shouldn't care too much on heating, but that one, whoo, even on a 70 degree day like this, I mean, you could feel it. You'd be sitting there on fire and then when that fan kicked on, I felt bad for everybody sitting next to me because that thing's fan exhaust would hit them and they would fry too. We would all be baked chickens in no time with that night rod and it's dadgum hot engine. <laughs> but the night rod did have a little bit more performance. <laughs> but this one's got plenty. <laughs> this one's got plenty. And it's gonna do you good, especially in an environment where you're going from suburbs to city, kind of like the transition, because Edmond is the burb, Oklahoma City's to my left. This is great for transitioning, great for getting in town, great for, you know, like I said, red light runs. It's just a fun little bike for, for all that, but, but don't, keep, if you're gonna go long-term, get the other two. If you want the looks, get the seat and another suspension set. <laughs> But it's still, it's still an exciting bike. It's still fun to play with. It's still so dynamic. And a great riding machine. <laughs> I know that there's stabilization on this camera, so you probably have no idea how this actually feels or what it looks like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, let's get this thing down. All right. Oof. <laughs> there. Ready. Drag my foot off there. <laughs> Definitely transitions just fine. Like I said, the engine is like its brothers. It's spunky. It has enough power. All three of them are gonna do you right. The 60, 
is for people who may be just now getting back into motorcycling, motorcycled before and looking for something lighter, not as potent, just wants to do some cruising, but have a lively little spirit where the Scout is that between one where, you know, you could be a newer biker, but it's, it's truly designed for somebody who's a moderate rider skill, you know, and above that wants to cruise, but have a ton of fun. And this one's the same as well. Kind of that moderate rider skill and above because you have so much power you can play with and so much potency. And this one's chassis is just so much more fun and, and easy to get into things. But I would change a couple of things. <laughs> but I still enjoy it. If the seat buckles down like like my Rebel did, it's not so bad at all. It wouldn't be so bad. This would be one I'd have to either go to tolerate or just replace it. <laughs> the suspension I can tolerate. <laughs> It's a good riding machine though. So at any rate, if you guys have any questions regarding the Scout family, the Scout 60, the Scout and the Scout Bobber, please leave them in the comments below. There is one more in the Scout family. One more in the Scout family that is coming. And that is the FTR 1200. That one is coming soon. We are in April now, very early. And those motorcycles are somewhere. They're anticipating late April, early May, hitting dealerships. And we will definitely be trying to get onto one of those and take it out too. Because right now, this family is so well-rounded and perfect for almost everybody. The enthusiast that wants to feel the machine beneath their their rear the one that wants to cruise a long time on a comfortable machine and the one who is new or is returning to have an entry level into a great brand all of them serve a good purpose all of them do it very well and this is a great line of motorcycles to start with and the FTR will be the extreme enthusiast one that's definitely more for the track hopefully we don't know yet we don't we haven't had a chance to play with it yet I've got to sit on it but I haven't got a chance to actually ride and when we do I hope it's enjoyable because the, if these are this good and every single one of these I have rode in their first year all these first year bikes have done so well that I can't wait to see what the next one's gonna be at any rate this is the rabbit hedgehog you keep that shiny side up, folks, and we're going to catch you on that next review. Have a good one. Oh, nice Valkyrie. That's a beautiful Valkyrie, actually. Sorry, I'm completely... I haven't seen one of those in a long time. <laughs> but anyway, come on back.